All right, so welcome to Austin, Texas. Thanks for having me. And what do you think of it so far besides the heat? <laughs> Definitely hot and sweaty. Man, I was I was told to uh, bring some uh, shorts and I, I didn't. I should have listened to them. I know, you're busy. You're like, you were like all over California last month, in Austin tonight, Florida tomorrow, Chicago, and Indianapolis. Yeah, man, I'm all over. Um, just just grinding, working this record, you know, the response from fans and DJs across America has been amazing. And in Europe, uh, you know, my track's gotten over to Spain and Germany and UK and, you know, the response has just been overwhelming because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, appreciate the old, you know, along with the new. So, you know, it's like heartbreak on vinyl. It's, it's all about actually my hometown in Seattle. Uh, you know, growing up, going to indie record stores, uh, like Easy Street is actually in the first verse, you know, Easy right. Street is empty, and that's like the store that I frequent the most, you know, and I was just like, I was in New York one day, and Vir Virgin was going under, and I was like, man, that's it, you know, when the, the largest chain is kind of going down, you know, it's kind of done. Yeah, well, you know, when I heard the second album was going to be called Heartbreak on Vinyl, I thought it was perfect for you, because I know vinyl is a big part, or it seems like a big part of your life. How many LPs you got in your collection? I just actually unpacked all my vinyl last night because I just moved from Seattle to L.A. I didn't count them, but it was heavy enough, <laughs> like a thousand pounds, so I don't know. Um, I have a full, I'd say, let's see, I don't know, 500. I mean, it's not a big collection, but I mean, that's for vinyl. 500's not a big collection? No, it's like three, five hundred, something there, you know. <laughs> I got like my sections, I got my hip-hop, I got my electro, you know, my trance, all my breakbeat and stuff from back you know in the 90s and yeah now if you had to grab three and run which three would they be i have uh war uh the joshua tree and uh Octoon baby signed by bono so those would be the three or actually i have bad and thriller signed by quincy jones too so but i don't you know yeah i would have to <laughs> i'd have to say say Probably Blue Skies by BT, you know, just because that was like the track that really changed my idea about like vocals, you know, over electronic music. And you and BT are pretty tight, right? Yeah, he's one of my great friends and kind of a mentor. I mean, I've been following him since, you know, 95. And, and he did some work on your on your first yeah, album, first right? Record, and we did something for his new album, but we didn't finish it. And then we also did uh, a music video of one of my songs that we haven't released yet. So look out that because it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> now every time i read something about you people throw names around like duran duran depeche mode erasure um you know 80s names come about when they talk about you is that do you draw your influence from that music or is that just something that happens i i'm honored to be affiliated with those names thank you um but for me it's it's i just because i grew up listening to it you know i mean uh I, you know, everyone's influenced by, you know, what they hear, you know, and growing up when I was a young lad, you know, I was always listening to Duran Duran. I mean, Duran Duran self-titled the American version that, you know, had there's something you should know. I mean, that's, uh, you know, please, please tell me now. I mean, that was just the jump off track for me when I was younger. I was just like, who oh, is this band? There's a, you know, and, uh. I love them, you know, and anyone that has influences like that. I mean, and the police. I mean, the police was huge as well. Definitely Depeche Mode because I'm moody and I, I was, I, I'm a classical piano player. So that kind of minor moody sound is always, there's definitely some of that in my music for sure. Yeah, I imagine that you are a person who's one, nostalgic, but you're also very, very passionate about human emotion. And that comes, but you're not, a downer about it. it it's very right. bright broody right it doesn't have some melancholy and you know and that <laughs> my heartbreak on vinyl was you know it was definitely a re uh, release for me uh, emotionally because I just gotten out of this relationship with this girl that I was in love with for five years you know and um, we were together at one point and then she was with someone else and they were about to get married and then she moved in with me and didn't get married and then she left, and I was heartbroken, and I tried getting her back, and I mean, that was the whole, the whole record, and I, I say thank you, Carrie Ann, because <laughs> I wrote half of it, at least half of it about her, you know, and, and, and definitely nostalgia, nostalgia for sure, because I, uh, 
I love technology, and I'm uh, a fan because I'm a total nerd. And I have toys. I play with them on stage, and you know, I love technology that allows me to do the kind of creative music that I love to do. But at the same time, you know, the internet and just other things have ruined the music industry. Not ruined it, but you know, has changed it in in a way. And you know, we have to adapt. You know, and it's hard when it comes so fast you know you're not ready for it and you know you feel like you're the only one but everyone else is you know experiencing the same thing is you know <laughs> so that's good you know so um the album's definitely about change for me i you know after audio daydream i was at a turning point in my career after american idol and all that stuff and uh it was interesting you know because I, I made audio daydream which i think is a great record but it Still wasn't an entirely you know, it was entirely me at the time, except I wanted to go more dance, and my label didn't want to go dance music. And I was just like, are you kidding? There's, dance music's going to take over. And I was right. You know? And that answers why you are playing so many, well, you're playing, what, three, four Pride festivals? Yeah, I mean, well, I support my brothers, you know, and my sisters, I guess, you know. Um, my best friend growing up was gay, and, well, is gay, past tense, what am I talking about? And um, my good friend DJ Dan, who I just released, uh, a track called Operator which is an old Midnight Star track I just uh, released with uh, DJ Dan at Uber Zone I live with Dan and you know Dan's a very gay man mm -hmm. love you Dan <laughs> uh, it's my girl right there my girl uh, you know and uh, I'm all about unity I've, I've always you know I, I grew up with, in a house of my mom's total hippie and you know my dad supported my mom like through music and everything it's just a very open house you know and um I'm kind of a sponge. I love the people around me. I love the positivity. And in the gay community, it's, I mean, it's all about being unified and, you know, coming together as one, whether, you know, age, race, creed, doesn't matter, you know? That's awesome. It's a, more of a message that the world needs, you know, you know about human rights.